So you guys are planning a trip to Greece and you're probably visiting Athens and you're choosing between different islands. So we're just gonna walk through a few things that you should consider before you decide which island to go to, right? So a lot of this is gonna come down to your personal preference and what you're looking for in your vacation. We just came back from Naxos and Paros. Here are some of, some of the things we feel like you guys should consider before planning a trip to either Naxos and or Paros. Yeah. Depending on what kind of vacation feel you like, take that into consideration. So Naxos and Paris are both more of those kind of quieter local vibes. People actually still live there like year round. So I think compared to Santorini or Mykonos, which I would say are, are very tailored toward tourists, mm -hmm. Naxos and Paros, you'll get a, a much more, uh, I guess, local feel. But at the same time, there is a trade-off. It is quieter. You probably will have less things to do if you're like a very you know, late night party animal. <laughs> the other thing that, that we noticed a lot too with the two islands is um, it was like group trips were there, families, and couples. Right. I do think Paros and Naxos give off more of that family vacation right. vibe as well, just because they're smaller, you're, you're gonna hang out at the beach, you're gonna explore towns, you're gonna eat. I don't think we even saw one club, to be honest, when we were there on the right. island. I think there are you know, definitely a lot of bars mm -hmm. in the main port cities that do kind of open up late, uh, but I would say you know, overall, your options are probably a little less uh, are a little bit more limited than say Tantorini or Mykonos. Mm -hmm. The next thing I wanna talk about is price. I would say that if you're gonna com compare the, the prices from these islands to say Athens, uh, expect to pay about 10 to 20% more. Uh, so things are more expensive on the islands. I suspect that's probably good, something to do with you know importing them or sending them sort of over. Uh, but I think compared to Santorini or Mykonos, uh, these islands, uh, Paros and Naxos, are going to be cheaper. When dealing with price, there's other things that are really cool, right? So Naxos is a self-sustaining island, so they actually don't have to import a ton. Um, so you get a lot of that local food and flavor, which I think is really cool and sets that apart. I think another reason why you may likely spend more on these islands is that a, a lot of the times you're you're paying a little bit more for the the ambience, the mm -hmm. vibe, right? Like you're gonna be you know, overlooking the ocean yeah. or like right next to the ocean, right? When you're eating. So, so, you know, just know that the ambience, the vibe, the, the scenery and all that kind of does uh, play in a little bit more and it should, right? Because you're on an island for a reason, right? Yeah. You want to feel that, that the island vibes. So you're, you know, I, I think you're going to pay a little bit more for that. So I think that's kind of what I would say about expect to pay about 10 to 20% uh, more than you would, uh, than you know, than you would in in Athens for similar meals, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other big warning that we would say is reservations. Um, this was something that we ran into both islands across all different areas. Not only food, but cars, scooters, right. mopeds, four wheelers, boat trips. Um, right. It's not it wasn't as easy to just kind of show up day of and be able to get what you might want. So if you are very limited in time, if you're only gonna be, let's say in Naxos for two days and Paros for two days, and there are certain things you really wanna do, you need to plan ahead and reserve right. those uh, in advance. One of the reasons we thought incorrectly that we didn't need reservations, that we thought that we were you know, going during you know COVID or you know Greece has just opened up like COVID is still happening so we thought there would be less tourists so everything would just be wide open to us uh, there were definitely less tourists at least definitely way less North American tourists yeah. definitely did not see um, a lot of like Asian tourists which I, I feel like mm -hmm. uh, I normally see groups of them uh, uh, you know whenever I travel but uh, there were still a lot of European tourists or you know, Europeans taking vacations. Uh, and also not, you know, besides the fact that there were less tourists overall, um, a lot of the restaurants had less accommodations overall, right? Mm -hmm. Because of COVID Protocols. safety precautions, right? So, um, you know, I think that we did not account for the, the, the decreasing supply uh, or availability of things during COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yes, definitely if, if there are things that you sort of must do or places you must eat at, definitely make reservations. 
Yeah. Last, you really need to pay attention to fairies and fairy schedules. Right. During the you know peak tour seasons, you'll see that there are fairies going to and from islands and you know multiple islands, multiple ferry routes and very, very often. So you can be very, very flexible mm -hmm. with what island you wanna to go to, how long you wanna stay there, right? You can go there, go back. Um, this isn't really the case during the off season. During the off season, especially during the, the depths of winter, um, the ferry routes are a lot less there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're, just, they're just not running as much or they're not running at all. So if, uh, if you're going during the off season, then just just definitely do your do your due diligence and, and research in that um, you know that area. We're big fans of of flying. So you're gonna land in Athens, then you can have a short layover, and then hop to majority of the islands are about a 45 minute flight. It is up down. It's great, quick, efficient. If you did or do enjoy riding on a giant boat and you have a lot of time, by all means you can do a ferry, but few things to keep in mind, right? You can't just go from the airport to the port, right? So you have to figure out how are you going to get from the airport to the port, which is, it's a, it's, it's kind of far away. Right, right. And then, and then a lot of those ferries pending, like to get to, to Naxos and Paros, they were about six hours. Right. Um, so you can weigh your options and financial as well, but 45 minute flight, six hour ferry. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you were already on the islands and you wanted to explore other islands, mm -hmm. it's probably a good idea for you to uh, ferry if that if the ferries are running. Um, and I think the reason for this is that like you don't have to go to the airport, you don't have to like go through security, right? Like it's just like a smoother process. Like going on the ferry, you just kind of take your stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and you can get same day tickets too for yeah. for them because they're so large and they. They happen so often, so if you just sit and have a coffee near the port, right. they load, unload extremely quick. It is just a machine, right. And, right. and I think within an hour, you'll see four or five ferries come and go. It's just constant. Yeah. Um, so that part's really great if, if you failed at making reservations for everything else, you will be totally fine with the ferries. Right. Okay, bonus, bonus tip for you guys. <laughs> Bring a towel. Bring a towel. Bring a, a beach towel. So I think this is really important, especially if you're going on the islands and you want to explore. Um, there are so many beaches, but what we noticed is none of our hotels gave us beach towels. Like, you, like large like beach towels. Yeah. actual beach towels. And you don't want to take, you know, a hotel bath towel out to the beach. So fortunately, we both packed, um, we both had like lightweight easy towels that are quick dry and um yeah even if you get if you go to a service beach they don't provide towels they just provide the lounge chairs so it was quite common to see everyone bringing their own towels now caveat if you don't have a beach towel in the towns they sell these really lightweight um kind of like blankets that that double as a towel and i think that when we saw most of them were priced around eight to ten euro yeah. so if you did let's say forget a towel you can easily buy right. a really cute kind of beach towel that you could always bring home as a souvenir right. and it's it's like no sweat but it is something that i think we should flag because I, I guess as americans we're used to going places where you know you can like grab a beach towel and then you go to the beach from your hotel right. it's right. kind of common it is not common there so right. so just keep that in the back of your mind yeah and you know a lot of the the, the, the families that we saw um, they brought their own beach towels they bought their own chairs they bought their own umbrellas yeah right? beach so yes yeah, so, i mean if you have the space in your luggage pack it all yeah <laughs> yeah so i think those are the main warnings and highlights that we wanted to share with you all for access and Paris. Right. Uh, yeah that's it yeah all right till right. next time bye